staying connected here with my wife um, using my Garmin 66i. This is how I keep it just tethered to me like this. So, you know, I always have it in my pocket. It's waterproof. If I dump in a rapid, whatever, I'll have comms on me all the time. Satellite phones are amazing, but if you don't have the satellite phone on you and it's in your boat and you tip and you lose your boat, you're kind of, you might be a little hooped. So that's what I like about this unit because it's smaller. And it just sent that beat. I just said, you rock my world. Today starts off with a three kilometer class one, two. After paddling up river a bit into blasting headwinds. And then we're just gonna have white water rapid after white water rapid as we careen towards Hudson Bay. We only have 170, pretty much. We only have 170 kilometers left in this trip, which seems like a lot, but when you consider what we did, it's not that much. We only have a week left turned out to be a pretty cool camp so I banged off 50k yesterday got here at night at like 10 30 there's uh, obviously maybe a traditional campsite here uh, there's um, uh, some really neat sort of half moon fireplaces looks like that's kind of how the Dene uh, will make them kind of in the sand um, like sort of back in the sand protected out of the wind like somebody who knows what they're doing built it anyways uh, yeah I guess um, it's back to the old, uh, you know, plan of break camp. We got my, I got my bag packed, just getting some coffee in me now, tent down and uh, load the boats and start paddling. Got a pretty nasty wind here, but it's actually wonderful because it's keeping the bugs down. Last few windless days, Ted and I just got eaten alive. So um, it's really nice to have a bit of a break from that. Hopefully it doesn't cost us too much of an issue in the rapid. Um, when we're in the rapids if it's a headwind it can really really mess with you and yeah we're gonna start having to keep our eyes peeled for polar bears and be a little more cautious about that it's gonna finish my coffee here stall on uh, packing up and all the uh, never-ending chores you have to do when you break camp and just procrastinate a little and enjoy my coffee before moving on Oh, for f these bugs! F you bugs! 
bugs are f***ing on tab. Well, I was unable to get a haircut before I came. So my hair looks like this. So what I do in the morning is when I have my breakfast, I have a spork. And so I just use the spork part to, to make sure it's brushed nicely. The, the fork like this. A lot of people will be like, why are you doing this? Like, why would you do such a hard thing? Like, what's the point? People think that like... It feels good to go yeah. out of your comfort zone and to right. be like, I'm scared, I might go over there, the rapid might kill me or whatever, but you do it and you bomb down it and you're like, catch a fish and you're like, yeah! You know, like it's, it's really an amazing feeling and like, I feel like so many people want that adventure, but they're afraid, they don't know how. As much as you could spend this whole time at an all-inclusive resort on the beach in Jamaica getting wasted or whatever, that would be like happiness in the moment, but you wouldn't really feel fulfilled after all that is done. And I think like that's kind of the reason why like doing this kind of stuff definitely rings a chord in me. Um, it does put you in the moment, it does face you with real challenges, but the feelings of fulfillment bring you what happiness really is in life and some of the moments on trips like this are definitely among the most enriching in life even though that they're challenging well it was our father's 75th birthday yesterday and um we meant to call him but it was just so late it's an hour earlier here by the time we had got to camp and actually had a chance it was super late and it would have been two in the morning there. So uh, we're gonna call him today, thanks to this awesome satellite phone. This thing's amazing. Grabbed it from the satellite phone store and you just pull it, just literally turn it on, pop the antenna out, twist the little thing up towards the sky like that. And uh, it just registers immediately and just has a great signal. So. We're gonna give him a shout. I'm sure he'll be surprised. I don't even think he knows we have this. Happy birthday! I know, uh, I know it was yesterday, but uh, we we paddled 50 kilometers yesterday, and by the time we were gonna bust out the phone, we realized it was like three in the morning there, or like 2:30, because uh, we're an hour earlier here, so. Um, so we're calling you now. 75. Happy birthday to you. So another 170 kilometers to go 
to reach Hudson's Bay, the ocean. And uh, today we're gonna start off with some rapids, uh, class two, it's probably pretty big in these water levels, I'd imagine. Then three kilometers of fun, class ones and twos through a scenic gorge. Really looking forward to that, just gonna be ripping along. Then we're gonna have some bigger stuff we're gonna be getting into, a couple of class threes. Potentially, if you run the big part, maybe even class four waves. And, uh, you know, just uh, so just pack full of rapids today. Looks like a bit of a stormy day here. Ted and I got hit with some wind and uh, then some rain this morning. But it doesn't look crazy. It just looks overcast and much, much colder. So we're just approaching our first rapid of the day. It says, our notes say, C2 left, avoid heavy flow. So I think that's probably what we'll do. So the rapid in this case that we thought was a class two is like literally just completely blowing out. Like the water's so high, there's no rapid left here. It's just a strong current. So it must have been shallower and rocky and uh, the water just got so high it basically flows over the rocks and they're too deep underwater to really even notice. That's one of the challenges on a, such a big river. You're not really protected from the wind. But this rapid is turning out to be easier because of the volume. It's just completely kind of leveled off with the higher water. Water pushing up on this island, eh? Yeah, it looks pretty high here. Yeah, the water seems a little higher here. Well, we are just approaching a three kilometer long rapid. Looks like it goes through a, a bit of a canyon too, so should be a pretty fun ride to say the least. Well, the hot weather we are experiencing is no more, um, which makes Tipping in the rapids more dangerous because you can't just warm up immediately when you get to shore. So we're going to dry suit up because we're entering a stretch of rapids now. It looks like for the next three kilometers are class ones and twos, which should be fun. Probably don't need the dry suit for that, but you never know with the high water. A tip through there which could be a three kilometer swim. So we don't want that. And right after it we're getting into class threes and uh maybe even a class four and stuff so might as well just get her done and suit up right now ow just poke myself in the eye stick this one uh you can't really scout it's just a class one two we have marked and uh, there's no contour lines on our topographic map crossing the river where the rapids mark so it's probably not crazy but at the same time you know we've had rapids that our river no said were easy class twos that were just raging so makes sense to be prepared amigos Wow, what a special little cove you found in here. It's really like a mangrove swamp in here, eh? Ready to bust off this canyon? Yeah. Me too. Me too. All right. Here we go. So we suited up and um, ready to go and after this there's you know a bunch of class three and some bigger runs so it uh so it makes sense to have just geared up and get ready right above all that fast current that looks 
Raging! Of the way. Go to my way. That's a guaranteed dump, maybe drown hole. Right, that's a keeper. Bottom, it looks big. Yeah. Well, like if we didn't have river notes, you'd have to climb up and scout this, you know? You wouldn't just bomb into this. That Asker looks sick. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That looks huge. Can we get over to the left here? Where the what? is the poor tog trail? Maybe it's in here. I don't know, it's just a cliff. Is that a, is that an island there? Yeah, that's the island. I don't know if I want to run that, dude. We just rounded uh, a bend, saw the next rapid, and it is raging. <laughs> From up here, it looks like dump for sure. We have time to get out and scout it if you want just to like look at it. Yeah, I think at these water levels, dude, this is a no-go here. 
That's what I think uh, is very, very likely the case. Did not, did not so getting up there might be just cool to get a shot of the rapid in the canyon and that's it. Right. You know? There's a, a pinch in the river and what looks like a horrifically out of control, raging class four, five, big water rapid. Um, apparently it can be run in lower water so, you know, we're kind of thinking, oh, could we run it? Do we get out and walk along through horrific bushes and up cliffs to scout it to what probably will be unrunnable? Or do we front ferry across the top of it, which is, you know, a little perilous in and of itself, in and of itself and uh, catch what's a much easier rapid on the far side of the river that skirts around the crazy drop um, by going on the inside of an island. So I think that's what we're gonna opt to do here. Bombing it would be fun and for the footage, but it's also like we're in the middle of I nowhere really and maybe isn't the best to bomb a four plus. Well, I don't even know if we can. It looks like from up here, it looks like dump for sure. So I have to make it from here across there. There's the island to that channel in there, but I have to do it just above this. This section here makes me a little bit nervous about, you know, a rapid coming up that's called Nine Bar Rapids that is very long and the river notes also mark it as a 3-4. So is it essentially just a 4 plus like this one the whole time? And you have to scout, which is challenging, and then, you know, run a section, eddy out and scout. Is that eddy still there in the high water? And then ferry all the way across to the other side of the river before a two meter ledge um, and then line that that part so how is that going to be in this water where when you know clearly this is uh, a little bit uh, tougher than then so makes me nervous but um, who knows this does seem like maybe a bit more of a pinch and might be more dramatic so we'll probably be able to manage it and we should be able to manage anything. We just got to use our heads and not be stupid, you know? We could just full send this, just full speed, just full speed kayak paddle, full speed right into it. Probably be pretty fun, probably wouldn't die. Uh, but you know, be pretty stupid. So as you can imagine, getting swept into that torrent backwards when I'm trying to front ferry, would be pretty low on the list of things that I want to do today. This eddy here though goes way up to there so you can probably follow this eddy up river. It's a nice back eddy and jump into the current and then front ferry down to there. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Well, I'm gonna do that front ferry up river, Ted. I'm gonna paddle up the eddy first. Are you gonna do that too or? Are you tired? If you want to go scout it, it's a totally blind corner. My guess is it was probably okay if we just stay right. But, all right, well, regardless, we're going to hop out and have a look.
So, scouting, thankfully, after front fairing over and cutting over around the back of the island, it looks like the channel around the back of the island just spits you out to the same rapid. So here we are in the end, scouting the rapid. Kinda looks semi-runnable. <laughs> so we're gonna try to come around this corner. It's like a 90 degree turn. You come in on the right and just sort of miss this massive wave on the right and these boils and sort of just get right and avoid it, but it's gonna be harder than it looks. Also coming around that corner back here, the current pushing you strong into that. So looking from above, it looks like, oh, we'll just stay right, but just staying right is gonna be a challenge to fly up because it's like a 90 degree angle to where we'd be entering. Uh, like instead of going straight into this eddy yeah. here close to shore. You could probably get through that too. Right, but like with speed coming from left to right and so that it just goes, you go through. You could probably come in like this, come in right at the edge there, hit that water that's going this way, side slip like this, miss the whole thing. And there's the next rapid down there. Pretty enormous. Definitely uh, bigger than the river note set. Well, it looks like we're gonna try to avoid it on the right. There's some huge boils there. We're gonna almost have to hit it right next to the big waves and skirt them, but there's some serious churning, spinning current. Look, Ted, there's like a whirlpool here. You have to just power through that. It's like a whirlpool that appears and then disappears. See how fast the current is entering yeah. the eddy line. Yeah. Me and Ted are a little scared because although we're finding a way to skirt this rapid, we're basically uh, we're basically running a class four trying to take a sneak route down the right. And the first turn is like right almost at the big waves. All right, you want me to go first? Ted clears the path.
Yeah. It's like perfect. Holy There's a seal in the rapids with me. Yeah, definitely bigger. We can see the boils, but even zooming in on the camera, it's hard to tell how big all the features are until you're right down there in the seat of your canoe. Just down river from that insane high volume rapid that we managed to skirt which was, we actually ended up kind of nailing it, but it was like, I had to power out of the waves, basically use a strong eddy, almost a whirlpool to spin me and get to shore. And then just crazy currents, crazy currents. So we're just approaching another uh, intense rapid. It's not supposed to be remotely as bad as that one, but from up river, it looks like a doozy. So it's gonna cut into our time for sure, but, uh, we don't want to rush. You don't want to rush when, you, when you're faced with stuff like this, but clearly we are having some uh, high water here and uh, that's what's causing these rapids. Oh, a seal leaping through the water. I love seals, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Well, that was a raging, raging rapid. Very sketchy even taking the right channel. And uh, let's hope these next rapids aren't like this because some of them are uh, very long. And uh, we essentially had to run a class four and try to just miss it. It definitely was not a class one down that side. So. That's an example of the, the water level there, for sure, making a big freaking difference to the river notes. I'm gonna just hop out, bail my boat, make sure I'm as dry as possible and give it a quick scout. I'll probably paddle back up this eddy Looks like it'll be like a middle left run and then get right, but I'm gonna take a closer look because it's pretty big. Looks a lot more reasonable. Yeah, thank God. Let's go up here and uh, sc and scout. Yeah, I gotta. I should probably bail, maybe. Pretty big though, eh? Yeah.
That was epic. Well, it uh, looks pretty freaking huge. A lot bigger than scouting it once I saw Jim run it. A little bit nervous, not going to lie. So I couldn't see around the corner, but uh, that was the route to take for sure. Obviously that's what Jim did. We've been paddling for ways now in some uh, calm waters. We are just approaching what has had us kind of fearful for days. A rapid called Nine Bar Rapids, which is a long stretch of uh, looks like three kilometers, maybe even more, 3.25 kilometers. Uh, and the top is from a river note, says it's a class three, four. In these levels, it might be even more intense. So we're gonna scout it out. We might have to portage it. Below this is a ledge that we have to line, but we have to eddy out left, get over to the opposite side of the river, then line a ledge as we run on shore holding the canoe on ropes and then run the bottom so this is one of the most challenging whitewater sections of this entire river but the fact that we're seeing horsetails way back here isn't the best sign That was a bad mistake.
and I just crashed in the hole and took all this water first way. Yeah, man. It wasn't even that bad. I was just like, oh, this looks easy. And I'm like, boom. I'm like, oh, that was a bad mistake. Approaching the ledge. Wanna go scout it? Oh, there's a ledge. There's a, a ledge, as the notes say, and we almost didn't scout it, because we are like, ah. But it's almost like right at the end of the rapid, there's a big ledge that um, he says is about two meters high, but you can see it, the feature. It's consistent, it starts with a rock on the left and it goes all the way across the river and you can tell it is because it's literally a consistent wave almost, looks like a hole all the way across. So kind of almost like a mini falls a ledge, right? But it's like two meters. So we're gonna try to run this and stay left pretty big. Stay left, stay left, stay left. Get over here and then just get in around that point there hopefully the current's not too strong get out of the boats line over or carry over that rock put back in finish the rapid well it is uh quite late in the day but we just have one more ledge to contend with before we're pretty much home free uh and we got to line it so lining's when you basically control your canoe at the end of a rope as you run along shore because it's just too bouldery and shallow to actually sit in the canoe and run it so things can go wrong when you're lining too you can pin a boat lose a boat so you got to be careful you got to be pretty nimble but i think we should be able to line this one safely it's a good thing we pulled over because the middle of this ledge looks like just like death so this is hopefully not going to be that
think, I guess it's not through, but looks like worse than I thought. I guess that's a skid plate though. Maybe that's just a skid plate. Feels kind of like yeah, smushy yeah. there though. Yeah. This means what? We made it down Nine Bar Rapids! Yeah! So that should be it for the uh, really challenging, more dangerous rapids for today. We're gonna put a few more kilometers behind us, but uh, big relief that this, um, you know, I think what it is, it's on the far right side, it's a class four, and on the side we ran it, it was a three, so three, four. Glad it wasn't like that other ridiculous one the whole way. That just would have been nuts. It would have been a portage. So, so stoked that we were able to run it. Uh, Cause that was part of my concern. You know, you have to portage, you miss out on all that fun. So. Well, that's it, baby. Nine bar rapids, took a few casts. Ted got bites, I had one on, lost it. Kind of a bummer, but super late. So, we don't have much more time, so maybe we won't have fish tonight, but epic day nonetheless. Well, it appears nine bar rapids didn't work out so well for somebody. Bit over here. Well, that uh, smashed in half canoe just goes to show that nine bar rapids was not so kind to some others. You know, you dump at the top, it bashes your canoe around between rocks, pins it on a rock, the current's so strong, you can even rip it in half, that's even a heavy duty Royal X canoe. And when your canoe rips in half, your whole outfit's in there. What do you do? You're completely stranded. All you have is what's on your body. You can find yourself in a survival situation real quick. You might have to try to walk out uh, to Churchill. It's probably over 300 kilometers to the closest, you know, bit of civilization. And, uh, you know, many rivers and lakes to cross along the way, but pretty much nearly impossible. Um, that's why I carry a, a survival kit and an in-reach sat texting device so I can try to walk somewhere maybe to where a plane can land. I carry that on my body so even if I lose everything else, I'll have something on me to survive for some time and some communication equipment. That's the most epic eagle uh, counter of all time, I'd say. Ted is communing with a bald eagle, I think, that is injured or something like that, but he got right up to it. Pretty cool. As he was doing that, the current quickly swept me down river, so he's a ways up river. Sun is almost down. It's got to be like 10.30 at night, so it's a late one again. 
don't really mean to get on the schedule here, but it has been the last couple of nights. Fortunately, it stays dark late, so I guess it's not the end of the world. But uh, yeah, we, we are short of our kilometers uh, today just because we put in so many miles yesterday, uh, late to go to bed, late to break camp. And then we were just faced with all kinds of uh, challenges today, um, including, you know, long scouting and, uh, you know, serious rapids that uh, took some time to sort of ponder over and everything like that. But overall, super cool. And uh, we did make it past some serious obstructions that, you know, even one of them even could have been a portage. A massive, uh, like a, just a big bald eagle just sitting there so trusting of me coming right up to it. Almost wonder if it's uh, injured or something. But uh, Jim paddled up to it before upriver and it did fly off seemingly fine and flew down here. But uh, for whatever reason, it uh, wasn't too concerned about me. Maybe it's holding the fish that it doesn't want to have to carry away or something. But um, yeah, a really cool experience. We might have to haul all our crap up and camp on top of this Esker point here, which might be kind of interesting, but it'll be good once we get up there. Just getting up there, not so good. looking for a campsite and uh, the next campsite that's marked in our river now this isn't for about 15 kilometers and it's quarter past 10. It took us a while uh, scouting and running some of those bigger rapids because of the high water and um, so we've only made it uh, 23 kilometers today but we got some big stuff under got some big stuff out of the way. There's a nice little landing here and an eagle was soaring over it. Oh the site has a nice spot to pull up and that's it. Do you want to dig out some warm clothes down here? Change my clothes because we are cold. I'm uncomfortable. The river is massive here. Where we were running all those rapids, the river divides around a huge island. And the two channels. Oh my god, it's so windy. Well. We ran out of time to find a good place to camp. So we're having to clamber up this massive rock pile esker here to a pretty exposed windy spot. But hopefully there's a flat spot for the tent. sections we were running today because it essentially branched around a massive island and this is where the river meets back up way over there we paddled from there so now they're meeting and uh, this is kind of a lakey air section but lots of current and uh, now the river's getting massive again
tent set up. This is just not a beautiful spot at all. Not a beautiful view. Just, just getting freaking epic. Well, the wind is burning our fire kind of quickly, but it's also boiling our water for hot chocolate and delicious dehydrated Thanksgiving dinner. And I think it's safe to say that this spot turned out to be ridiculously cool and freaking beautiful. This is what I'm dealing with on the mosquito front. <laughs> 